Hello, and this is Artan Taskin from Ozen Engineering. And in this video, I'll be demonstrating the details of the model settings for simulating the steady vortex in a stir tank using ANSYS Fluent. Let's go through the details one by one. So for the multiphase setting, we have the volume of fluid setting, uh, volume of fluid selection with the number of phases of two, um, implicit uh, formulation, we're going to do a steady state analysis um, and the interface modeling between the water and the air is going to be sharp. So phases are air, the primary phase, and water is the secondary phase. And uh, for, for, for turbulence, we have used uh, steady state uh, transport Kiromega model. Um, and the rest is pretty much off, as you see here. The materials, as you may imagine, we have air and water, um, liquid. Cell zone conditions, we have two cell zones. One is the uh, rotating region. This one, and uh, the impeller blades are actually um, located in this um, a cylindrical um, domain. And the rest of the tank is named as tank. Boundary conditions. We, we don't have inlet condition for this particular application, um, but we have outlet condition at the tank tap top, which is um, this surface. And uh, the walls are uh, pretty much, um, let me demonstrate to you the impellers. And the shaft, I'd like to add this into the active window. Um, this shaft all the way to the top of the model before it reaches to the uh, rotating region. And what, for the rotating region, we have another uh, portion of the shaft as shown here. And uh, of course, the wall tank is, uh, is the, the exterior walls of the tank. So, um, for the corresponding setting of the shaft in the um, multiple reference frame region, the blue one here, um, we have the we have a stationary wall setting because this entire volume has um, um, setting is, is is rotational, so we don't have to specify a moving wall, particularly on this one. However, for the shaft, the the gray um, uh, component here. Um, which um, stays on the on the stationary um, side of the fl fluid domain, and that's why we have to set the moving wall, and because that shaft is going to rotate with the rest of the impellers, and the corresponding speed is the same speed as as the uh, as the impellers. So um, I'll get to the uh, the named. Um, so, um, uh, functions um, and the corresponding inputs and outputs um, associated with those. In the cell zone conditions, the, um, the cell zone named as MRF is basically the rotating region, as I uh, demonstrated before, and the, the setting is um, a frame motion. Um, the rotational axis is a positive Z direction, as you see here. In the positive z direction. Uh, it's actually this way. And uh, the corresponding speed is again the same um, speed setting. Um, let's get to the name selections. So in this particular example we have some input parameters and some output parameters. 
And um, ag agitation speed is the uh, one of the input parameters, as I uh, mentioned before. Um, for particular, f uh, in this case, we have also the fluid density um, as an input parameter. Um, and um, uh, I mean, these are selected um, for the later application, uh, but not uh, we're going we're not going to use these um, on this uh, particular video. Um, and the liquid level uh, is set as another um, input parameter, as well as the fluid viscosity. So if you if you can take a look at the uh, the icons here on the name selections, if the arrow is actually from the left side of the P, it indicates the in input parameter. Uh, on the right side of the P, um, going downwards, if it indicates the outlet parameter. And for the outlet parameters, we have the a vortex depth and uh, um, a certain um, uh, um, uh, fluid level to the tank ratio or and or uh, the impeller uh, height. We also consider the, the power which is actually the um, speed multiplied by by the torque. So let's go over um, um, those uh, particular um, outlet parameters and uh, so the tank height is pretty much the entire height of the domain, and the liquid level is, a co is the corresponding uh, portion of it, uh, which is filled by uh, by the liquid. An impeller height is demonstrated uh, uh, indicated over here as the top of the impeller, um, the distance up to the top of the impeller from the from the base of the tank. When it comes to the vortex depth, we calculate two different levels of liquid. One is the liquid level maximum level and the liquid level minimum. Um, and then uh, the, when you subtract these two, we get the, the vortex depth. So these are uh, going to be utilized as the output parameters. So in order to monitor the, uh, the simulation, uh, we have options. Of course, again, the vortex depth is put here, power, impeller top. Um, an impeller liquid level maximum and minimum um, torque as well as um, 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 turbulent dissipation rate and uh, uh, stain rate. So um, before um, performing the simulation what we have to do we have to initialize and that's uh, the the, these are the settings for the initialization. After initialization, um, we have to patch. Um, and uh, patching uh, is going to require a cell register, meaning that we have to create a portion of this um, uh, uh, domain um, to specify the fluid uh, portion. And that is actually with the cell register. So as it is named as liquid patch here, so um, everything, so we put like um, high numbers just to indicate that the X minimum, X maximum, Y minimum, Y maximum are pretty much covered for the entire um, domain, um, um, including the uh, Z minimum. But the Z maximum is going to be defined as the height of the fluid um, with uh, 0 0.19 meter. And um, if, we, if I can display the corresponding volume, and that's the corresponding register, and this portion will be f um, the, uh, with the water, and the rest will be the air, just before uh, just before the simulation. And uh, and after the patching, um, we're going to um, we have to do the iterations. So I already completed the simulation, and um, I would like to um, show you the results. So um, I performed about 5,000 iterations, and the residuals are um, low. Um, the continuity, I guess, it, it may need a bit more, um, um, some more iterations. But I'd like to focus on the parameters that we monitored. Uh, dissipation rate, so stain rate seems to be um, stabilized. The, the liquid level maximum seems to be stabilized liquid level minimum seems to be stabilized which means that the vortex height which is this one 
seems to be stabilized uh, even though it's not exactly so but uh, I think it's it's giving us a good indication um, similarly the power uh, seems to be so and uh, I can um, show the the corresponding contour of the water volume fraction on a cross-sectional plane which is shown here let me rotate okay so as can be seen the corresponding vortex formation um, this is colored with the with the volume fraction of water um, so red indicates water uh, apparently blue indicates the air component and um, furthermore we have we may have a another indicate or, or demonstration of of a, of a similar thing with a scene that we created and now we have uh, the fluid region um, you know, with the blue color or turquoise color and the corresponding top surface with the with the vortex um, and the rest of it and I have also a saved animation um, as you see with this animation um, per the iterations pro progress um, the the vortex formation establishes and after a while uh, we don't get to see too much of a change which further demonstrates uh, an approximately established um, steady condition and um, as you might have already noticed the impellers are not rotating because this is a steady state simulation and the rotational aspect is put there with the uh, multiple re reference uh, frame option so this is all for this um, video. Um, thank you for watching.